Edward Ndobu and his family traveled a rough journey as they tried to cope with his condition and the social hardships that came with it. Tragically, his illness progressively weakens the body. Edward is displaying an incredible fighting spirit though. Not only is he working through his condition, he also shares his vision with policymakers at an international level. Edward knew he had to find a way to help change the way South African educational institutions deal with disabled students. In 2008, the teenager applied to be part of the newly formed African Leadership Academy, along with 1,700 others. He made it. The institution is renowned for its effective programs in leadership, entrepreneurship, and African studies. I began to realize that when we speak about poverty, when we speak about, um, you know, not having access to social institutions, that these things are systemic. They don't just happen out of nowhere. His new knowledge enabled him to demonstrate his commitment to disability justice. I founded a global organization called the Global Strategy for Inclusive Education, uh, which was essentially a youth-led uh, initiative that mobilized young people around the world um, to prioritize the educational rights of children with disabilities at the forefront of a global agenda. It gave him a chance to travel extensively, addressing global leaders at gatherings like the World Economic Forum. People that were in the audience, uh, Mr. Kofi Annan, um, Scrasa Marshall, uh, Professor Klaus Schwab, who is the founder and executive chairman of the forum. Edward finished his high school studies in 2010 and went on an intense fundraising drive for his university fees. He attracted the interest of Transnet, who became his main sponsor. We just wanted to make his uh, dream come true because we saw in him a leader that could inspire possibly a whole nation uh, into uh, how we confront our challenges and how we deal with uh, our lives generally. Edward packed his bags and moved to Canada to begin his four-year degree. He joined thousands of students from around the world at Calton University in the capital, Ottawa. I am um, pursuing an independent study, an independently designed major uh, that looks at educational justice and inclusion, um, specifically as it relates to policy making. Carlton is one of few universities in the world that fully cater for the needs of disabled students. The student could write the exam in a different room, perhaps with a scribe, so they would tell the student, sorry, they would tell the scribe what their answers were and the scribe would write it down for them. That's one of the services. And then my program largely looks after the physical needs of the students and then everyone is involved with the accessibility of the campus overall. In addition, the university offers a program that assists with daily needs like bathing, clothing and even feeding students with physical challenges. It's exactly what Edward would like to see in South Africa's mainstream education institutions. Since he began his studies, he has been active using the media to further his vision. He also works for a student organization that counsels young people, while at the same time writing for an online publication. I think we can learn a lot that one that, you know, despite having a disability, a visible disability, that's not a hamper or a hindrance on his success. 
and we should all uh, view whatever you know so-called aliments that the world may see um, as part of it. Edward continues to give keynote speeches at events across Canada and the U.S. When he returns to his beloved South Africa, he has a clear mission. When I graduate next year, um, my plan is to really begin consulting, consulting for both governmental and non-governmental institutions uh, in terms of putting together programs, policies, uh, mechanisms, putting together the right, me putting the right mechanisms in place uh, to really, in a meaningful and sustained manner, address um, the economic, political, uh, and social um, barriers uh, that prevent people um, in marginalized communities from becoming meaningful participants. Um, of society. From Ottawa in Canada, it's goodbye for now. Join us again next time. My name is Mpola Gaje. Cheers. <laughs>